go ahead. Uh, tell me about the pool. Oh, uh, this is the first pool, and it was built in Angel Park, opened in 18, 18, 1958, and it was the first time some Prairie ever had a swimming pool. Uh, these are all photographs. These are from actually when the pool closed in 1991. But it had a it's pool, and we had a um, penny toss to get the kids used to being in the water, to go underwater. And everything here is from event pool. This is a life uh, saving guard that the lifeguard used. Uh, they have a boy and a lifeguard jacket, which you can turn around as the old Mark and Beck symbol on. It's a neat one because it incorporated the high school symbol. Then we have the cash box. This was on a front table, and in case they had trouble with their math, they have it like it cost 75 cents. So two for 75, four for 75, all the way down. This is exactly the way it was, including the um, whistle, because the lifeguards there all wore whistle. What else we got over here? The sign. Okay, this is the, oh, this is the counter. This is really unusual because they have to keep track of season tickets, adult tickets, youth tickets, baby tickets of who are in the pool, and then they kept track of people who went out because the pool had a small capacity, so they had to be sure if anything go go over capacity. This piece is a sign of all the pool rules. And you notice the ladies' please wear caps isn't as worn as the rest of the sign. That's because when boys started wearing long hair, they refused to wear swimming caps. So they covered it up with tape. Otherwise, it was discriminatory. And what's the next sign about there? Oh, okay, this <laughs> this was in the lifeguard station. I think it's, I've seen them before, but welcome to our ool. Notice there is no P in it. Please keep it this way. That was our slogan. And these are baskets. I know they don't use them anymore. Nobody seems to have a pins anymore, but like a big safety pin with a number on it that matches a basket. And this is where you put your clothes. These are all period swimming suits. Then we had a basket room where this was stored and you put that pin on you. And when you came out of a pool, you put the, you know, gave a attendant the pin. And this is another basket from there. And everybody changed out in the open, at least on the men's side. They just had long benches. And then what do you got back here? Okay, these, the lifeguards had their own lockers in the lifeguard station. And they used magic markers to decorate them. We finally found out that Becky actually was a Becky Penn. Oh. And we never knew who Big Al was. Except, excuse me a minute, let me go over here. It, on the back of this, they have Big Al War Warner, oh. and that's Big Al. So Those would have been on the uh, pool when they closed up? Okay, but the pool closed up after the 1991 season. Uh, towards the end, it was they claim it was leaking water so badly in a week you could almost rebuild the pool. Wow. It, had, it had outlived its... It had outlived its um, time period, and I know they were having tremendous problems just keeping it going, and that's what led to the new pool. But when this pool was built, everybody in the town had had, I believe, 1,007 people, something like that, in that era. Uh, they had raffles, they had talent shows, uh, the fire department helped. Uh, uh, it. I know Donna Davis put on her talent shows for this. It was a huge community effort. And that's that's what actually brought the pool together. And so what do we got down here? The, uh... Oh, this is, this is one of the signs that was outside the pool. There are a ton of them. And it basically says, when you leave, you must pay an admission fee to re-enter the pool. So you couldn't leave unless you were willing to be paid. And we have a whole collection of signs from the pool, but we, we have the umbrellas, we have a lot of things, but we weren't sure how much to bring tonight because it, it's neat. Uh, and Parks and Rec and Bob Hollings 
helped us build this collection over the years because they never, uh, the lifeguards actually did. Uh, when I went in there in 1991 to take some of the photographs, they said they were just so glad that what they had been a part of for so many years, you know, from being a lifeguard, possibly being a teacher, and swimming there, wouldn't be forgotten. That somebody was going to remember the heritage. Of the so were you a lifeguard there? Uh, no, but I, I taught swimming there. And then I was also one of the attendants of the pool. But that's the pool where they first had special classes for um, special education students, and which was really unusual at that time. And people just didn't do it. But it was a main recreation center, you know, in the summer. Uh, Angel Park was the park to go to. Half families went for picnics there on Sunday. They had all these old stone fireplaces. Uh, a lot of old play equipment that no longer exists there. Uh, of course, you have the racetrack. Uh, at one time, in the center of a racetrack was a high school baseball diamond. The racetrack was used for the track program. And more of a Sweet Corn Festival sets up their rides. That was a football field. Wow. So, you know, it was a really, I mean, we had tennis courts at one time in that park. So it was really quite a community center.